Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you much. for having us. And we're at midweek of the third week of a provincial election that no one sort of wanted, and it happened in a hurry. <laughs> but you made it through the gate with getting your paperwork done. And I got four candidates. Great. And uh, describe a little bit what that's like. A lot of people don't know what that's like trying to get the paperwork done. And, well, and, when you're forming a new party, you have to get 10 associations in 10 different writings. Hmm. And I really wasn't expecting an election, so I was caught flat-footed, so I had to do a lot of extra last-minute work, which I completed properly. And uh, then um, to go around and get the candidates at, you know, at the same time and that. So it made it difficult to get them all. So uh, I, I did the best I could and, and I got four. Yeah. And of course, in the mainstream media was the story about the Green Party candidate being one minute past yeah. two o'clock or something. Yeah. Does that kind of make you want to frown and go like, what, what's that about? Or is it that important that, you know, you get it in at 10 that morning instead of at two that day? It would be better if she did get it in earlier, but still, if she was that close, I, I really think they should have honored, her, you know, her efforts. And, uh, you know, uh, 10 by whose watch? Yeah, you know, Kim I mean, by whose watch is what I wondered. Yeah. And, you know, it, it can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, everybody's time's just, a, you know, a minute off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, I think she should have uh, been allowed to, to run. A little bit of grace. Yep. So, uh, what's it like for you? How many elections now? Is this your second or third? <laughs> third. Third? Yeah. So, what's that like for you? Well, uh, I'm still sticking behind him and... Uh, I like to support my husband. I'm very proud that, he, and honored that he even wants to, you know, bring the province back to its course and and to continue. But uh, uh, it's been a rough ride, yeah. but uh, that's all right. We keep going. Yeah. So are you into it as bad as he is with uh, all the details and what the well, heck are they thinking? Or? Probably not as bad, no. <laughs> oh, she's, of course. Uh, she but, does a lot. Uh, uh, she's uh, there beside me. I'm not best at spelling, as anybody looks at my Facebook will realize that. <laughs> and yeah. she helps, uh, you know, in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And that, and uh, Simple little ways, but they all yeah. count. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a team effort, you know. And, yeah, it and, is. And, and we've always been a team all for life. Yeah. You know, we've had our ups and downs, and uh, we just stick together, and we get through them. And Yeah, and, and it's a real treat to have you both here. I mean, this is rare, so yeah. thank, thank you for you. that. Thank yeah. you for nice. I was uh, brought up in the country in a large family, and uh, we was used to hard times. And I started, I bought it into a dairy farm with 58 head of cattle. And the first sort of big incident that come up was a, a, a tractor rolled on the neighbor. And uh, we got them out from under it, and um, we didn't have no ambulance service in the area. So what we did is... Um, when was this around, Joe? Around the se early 70s. Okay, thanks. And uh, so what we did is we I turned around and uh, uh, put them in the back of a station wagon, and I got in on my hands and knees and got them to the hospital. and. And along with the help with two other people, and and uh, but from there on, uh, we went after the government for an ambulance service, and we was told we'd never get it, but we got it. Uh, it uh, ended up being the model for all the ambulance, uh, all the volunteer ambulance services in the province. It grew from one to one hundred mm -hmm. before they made it a paid service, mm -hmm. and a few years later, I become search. Uh, coordinator for the New Brunswick Ground Search and Rescue, and I helped organize all 13 teams in the province, and uh, it, uh, so I always work for the community, and the one other thing that I'm really proud of, and I'm proud of them all, but the uh, critical incident stress debriefing. We used to have meetings every once a year at the UN, at UNB, at the hospital, and uh, what I did was, um, put in every year that we should have critical incident stress. So uh, they call me up and I said, look, I'm way too busy. <laughs> you know, I got the farm, I got all this stuff going on. And they said, no, no, it's because of you. Uh, you put in for seven years in a row, be there. So I said, okay, I'll come. So I went and I was there for 14 years uh, helping the critical incident stress. And it was to debrief people from after accidents, uh, hmm. We, we did doctors, we did policemen, we did uh, uh, 
RCMP. We did. Uh, we even was in, invited to go to the army, and uh, to schools and to banks after robberies and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it it worked so good that all the fire departments, the ambulance services, and them all have their own team now, and even the Canadian Army. So it was all based on that model. So it really shows that, you know, uh, people with new ideas can really do something if, you know, they, you stick to it. Yep. And uh, this is what I feel we got to do here to, to help get the politics of New Brunswick turned around. So would that be the underlying principles for the, for the KISS party? Yes. Yes, it's all based on that. So can we apply that to some of the goings on these days? I know one of your big bailiwicks is about dealing with the debt and deficit. Yes, so. the debt oh, is, uh, one, yes. we're spending uh, uh, almost $2 million a day in interest going to the bond rating agency. Mm -hmm. And you just imagine what we could do if we wasn't spending that money. And the big thing was, is I farmed for quite a few years and grew the herd up to 365 head. And then I got allergic to them. And after going to the doctors and trying to get something to help out, it didn't work. So I ended up having to sell it. And when I stopped and looked it all over, I owed $800,000 on my signature. Mm -hmm. So I got experience at dealing with the debt. My lawyer suggested bankruptcy. I said, nope, hmm. I wouldn't leave that debt on anybody. So anyway, I went to my creditors and worked it out. And this is what we got to do with the bond raging agencies. we got to go to them and explain we are the poorest province in Canada. And we got to just work out a deal so that we can uh, reduce this debt. I brought this up in the last election in the uh, leadership debate. And all the leaders agreed that night hmm. something has to be done. But two years have gone by since then, and hmm. not a word said. Hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, they need people there that when they say something, they stick by it and take their action. Hmm. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I think he has all the power in the world to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you just get in on the ground floor and you, you yeah. get people going in the same direction. Yes, you don't always think about every little thing to make you say, oh, I don't want to do this. You just do it. The thing and is, is that very important. when you um, were, you know, like when I was farming, I had six full-time employees at the end. Hmm. I had uh, 36 people in the ambulance service. We had approximately the same amount in search and rescue and eight or nine in, in critical incident of stress. And whenever you got a call, y you never got the same people always with you. So you had to learn to adjust and adapt and <coughs> used to working with a variety of different people. And this is very important, I think, to, to have a, uh, a group uh, of small parties running the province mm -hmm. and all working together and they need someone that has experience at doing this. And he also is a people person. Mm -hmm. He loves helping people. And uh, I've learned that from stories from the family of, since he was a young boy. Mm -hmm. So it's just his nature, I mm -hmm. think, you know, to carry on with with things like this. Yeah, helping yeah. others instead of helping yourself, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. Because it yeah. clicks through. Yeah. The thing that you mentioned was, um, makes me want to think about regional economic development because we're in an election and stuff. And the way you talked about reconfiguring groups of people to work together to make things happen in their community. So here's some space to go play w with uh, the KISS party and how you might approach that. Well, uh, I've read the... Uh what report was that? <laughs> they, they all have different names. Uh, I read the report on the... the uh, Municipal reform? Yeah, municipal reform. So it's the FIN report. FIN report, FIN yes. Report, yeah. And I got copies of it yeah. and that. And I, I agree with it. And uh, the problem I see is... There's a few of them that have started it. But the problem I see is that they just not doing a good job at selling it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I think it's uh, really a, a better system. It reduces a lot of the power off of the uh, off of the people or the, the government down to the people, hmm. and that's where it should be because the locals know what's going on. 
even in the uh, Department of Transportation, the road commissioner used to have some say, and I would put the power back into the road commissioner's hands because uh, a good example is they'll get a pothole and you call them and they say, yep, okay, and they'll check it out. And then I talked to the road commissioner about it and he said, well, yeah, we got to mark them down and record them and all this and that and send a report in to the supervisor. Well, he hasn't got time to run out and look at every pothole, so he waits till he gets a whole bunch out there. But by this time, these potholes have grown and it ends up costing us more in the end, yeah. where if the... the uh, Supervisor, the road commissioner could just take and you know get a, a, a half ton load of asphalt and go around and fix the smaller ones. Sometimes it would never get any bigger. Yep. That story reminds me of chatting with some of the union guys that work for the city of St. John. This was 10 or 15 years ago, but they were speaking to their frustrations with uh, they would show up for work. They'd be the guys going out filling the potholes. Mm. So they get their work order for the day, they'd get their truck and get their equipment and their crew, they'd get the asphalt they needed. And they'd be on a street corner and say there's five potholes, but their order said they only fill three. Yep. Because, right, yep. so they fill the three. Meanwhile, people in the street walking by thinking, like, what are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. how come you're not fixing the other two? Mm -hmm. And it's a fascinating example of how we have the resources, but something mm -hmm. gets lost along yes. the way with, with the system. And they mm -hmm. felt bad they couldn't fill the other two. But their load of asphalt was for so many, and they had to go to the next stop and the yeah. next stop, yeah, that, and they had to leave two potholes. Which that's the public... precisely what it is when you take it away from the locals for decision making. Mm -hmm. And the reason that it ended up two more potholes is that from the time that to get through the the paperwork, yeah. it was months probably. <laughs> yeah. And the two potholes weren't there when they put in, yeah. you know. So yeah, it's it's a very good example of how how it should be changed. Mm. So this municipal reform thing, if we wander down that, which gets into downloading more authority to local communities who know how to fix their own problems if they're given the resources mm -hmm. and the authority. Um, to, so we've had that municipal report, report for a while now. Yes. And it's still not being implemented. Right. Mm. So it's getting stuck somewhere else. <laughs> Do you have yeah. any thoughts about, you know, is it because the, the two political parties uh, bounce it back and forth and no one wants to take that risk? Yeah, the, the, my feeling is that the political parties make all decisions based on how many votes they're going to get. Okay. And if they get in an area, oh, we don't want to lose any votes there. So they, they just won't do nothing in that area. Mm. The other thing is, is that it's, it's, it's um, you just got to look at what's best for the province. Mm. And that's what you proceed with. Mm. And yes, you're going to turn some people off. You will never satisfy everybody, and I realize that. But when it comes to the next election, it, it really, you know, I think will show that you worked and what you've done yeah. and, and uh, really bring it out. Now, it, it's got to, uh, it, this, that's part of the system that's got to change too. And, uh, you know, Good. we could be a lot better off. Yep. As you watch all this and watch your husband in the media trying to get two inches of space <laughs> or trying to get a minute of a sound, you know, it's because it's hard. You know, you're always oh, yeah. fringed. Mm -hmm. um, and, and even People's Alliance and Green Party, they're still kind of pushed off. Instead of it's election time and it's all bets are off, it's a level playing field and you have to integrate everybody into the conversation. What's that like for you to watch, watch him putting himself out there and building a party and and trying to do something good for the province. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yes, I do, because he's really trying. Uh, the The people that do know Gerald know that he's really um, a true to heart person that would try mm. and do the best he could. Mm. But uh, there's always those that don't. <laughs> yep. Well, th they'll and, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. I. You go ahead. Because because they'll you know. They'll notice the hat. Yeah. They'll notice coming from a totally different direction yeah. than all the rest, mm -hmm. which is a good thing because it adds to the mix. But a lot of people will be looking for the tried and true or yeah. what they're familiar with. Yeah. And so you, you watch and listen to all that stuff. Yeah. Has there been times when you've wanted to kind of either hug somebody because they got it <laughs> or you wanted to go, you need to smarten up? <laughs> yes, I, you get both. You get both. <laughs> But uh, you just take it, you know, for, for what it is. And 
you know, not everyone's going to agree with them. Yeah. And, uh, but we hope this time the majority does. Yeah. But uh, he, he's just a man of truth. He's, he loves making things better mm-hmm. and uh, loves the people. So it wouldn't yeah. matter, you know. Just to follow he, that. He would keep going. Just to follow a little bit and then we'll come back. Do you have a moment that was really good that you can share a story of some sort? Or do you have a moment that was really bad and you hope that never happens again? (laughs) Because a lot of people don't see behind the scenes. They don't see what day-to-day life is like. And here's an opportunity to say, you know what, putting yourself out there, but eh, there's a downside and it looks like this. Or there's a really big upside and it looks like this. It's exciting Hmm. at times. And you hope for the best. Um, I can't quite think of anything really drastic hmm. that you know probably to jerry it was drastic <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i've watched him every hour of every day yeah. uh, trying to, to figure out the problems and how to fix it or whatever hmm. but uh no i i enjoy the, the run and uh we just can do the best we can do yep. that's all we can do yep. So then I'll pass it to you. Do you have a moment where there this was validating, you know, that this was good, someone understood what I was trying to do? Or do you have another moment It's like, man, they're still not cluing into my contribution to this? Well, uh, I I really don't think they've uh, caught on to the politic, uh, my movement to try and get improvements in the politic, but I think they're they're starting to get aware that I, I do have different ideas and it's not quite what they're thinking. And, uh, but where I really seen uh, uh, one incident is that I was invited to go to the uh, public utility hearing board hearings mm-hmm. about rate design, mm-hmm. and I went. And when I walked into that first meeting, I was shocked. There was twenty lawyers and two civilians. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, well, no, hold on, I know what I want to say. So anyway, I just sat down. And the first three meetings, they didn't even speak to me. But then once they found out when I got up to speak and, and made things that I started making sense about things that they hadn't even thought of. Mm-hmm. And uh, so a long story short, at the end of the first hearing, we uh, argued, these, me and Roger, argued against smart meters and we got it defeated. And we went through another hearing a year later and it was a year and a half long. and they have not announced their decision yet on it. They put it off on account of the COVID. But I really think that, uh, uh, you know, uh, all those 20 lawyers was fighting for it. And, I thought, you know, oh. and people told me, we never win. You, you know, like, no, no, look, they got it all planned. It's all set and it's all turned in stone and the government's just going through this to make it look good. The sad thing about it is, is that we didn't get paid nothing for it, me or Roger, <laughs> and the other 20 lawyers was getting two, uh, I think it was $250 an hour. Yep. So it, you know, and I put in a request for $100 a meeting and NB Power turned it down. So. That shows what one man can do though. Mm-hmm. And all those lawyers, they had notes and notes and kept writing more notes and. <laughs> Nothing for them to have and anywhere from 45 minutes to three hours. <laughs> You know, of, of, uh, of a presentation. And he could just say a few words, and it just made sense mm-hmm. to them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you get, you've got the power there. Just That's something that seems to be shifting a bit. Um, with having four or five parties and a bunch of independents, um, it seems yeah. to be creating some room for people who typically don't engage to identify it's like oh but but that made sense to me or yeah. i like that yeah. idea it would be a lot better if they all work together hmm. a lot better. yeah yeah so because the invitation you're bringing is the idea of a collaborative government or a cooperative government yes you can have your different ideas but oh yes. in the end yeah. it's supposed to go a certain way for everyone yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, i really feel that a lot of the politicians that are coming to the table is their first time and they don't have a lot of life experiences Mm-hmm. But, you see, I've had years on the ambulance service, on search and rescue, on uh, I uh, was in charge of a forest fire at Gagetown. Mm-hmm. 
there's uh, the airplane crash that, that happened in the Fredericton Airport in '92. Yep. I got a call at 1:30 in the night to go in, and yep. and they put me in the towers looking after everything. So it's uh, it it's those type of things that, that give you an, an experience. And at times uh, I didn't really see the benefit of it, but now that I uh, looking at some of these things, I think it was almost like a training course <laughs> yeah. that would would help make a person, uh, you know, better for the job. And I, I really uh, hope that you know uh, uh, that's the way it works. But when I had the farm in that, you had to have everybody on board. And one thing that the legislature I would like to see change is take the word constitution, or the not constitution, take the word. Um, opposition out hmm. and have the party of sober second thought replace it and that way it changes their mindset when they get in there because what happens is people elect the person that they think is the best in their writing to help straighten things out but when they get there and they're put in the opposition then they're basically being told well you got to oppose no matter what they do hmm. and uh this is why New Brunswick's not getting ahead. Mm -hmm. it, it's really uh, in a in a turmoil, and uh, this this is, is a simple change like that can make it so much better. But what you do too is that uh, when I had men working for me and they did something good, then I I you know gave them credit. Yep. And uh, it happens in politics rarely, but look at uh, Tommy Douglas. He brought in Medicare. And the liberals put it in, but they always declared that he was the father of Medicare. Yep. So it can be done. Mm, yep. It can be done. And, and that's um, a change of heart almost to politics, to, yes. to be cooperative. It certainly is. Yeah. Uh, and maybe we're on the cusp of that. Um, that would be nice, encouraging. I think general population would really like to see that in the legislature. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other narratives that always runs through our, our elections in New Brunswick is... Um, people who aren't elected are the ones making most of the decisions. And so um, here you are, you're an MLA, you get elected, you've presented all these ideas through an election period, mm -hmm. and now you're a, kind of a backbencher because there's only so many cabinet seats. Yeah. Now you're told you're going to vote this way and you're going to vote this way. Mm -hmm. So you're silenced because a small group holds most of the power and you're saying you're going to vote on party lines. The four-way minority government uh, loosened that up a little bit. Um, a five-way minority government would loosen it up even more. Mm -hmm. uh, and it got us through a pandemic. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I think Mr. Higgs did a great job getting us through the pandemic. Yeah. But the problem was is that the pandemic is only one thing. He forgot <laughs> to run the rest of the province. Yeah. And as far as the uh, people, uh, you know, like in the legislature, if, if we took the, const, uh, the word... Um, um, opposition. opposition opposition out of it then uh, uh, what I would do is would give it we would make decisions but we'd give it to all the people to look at hmm. and come back with you know their ideas yep. and when someone come up with a good idea that would be recognized and hmm. appreciated and we would move on that and so you wouldn't have that Oh well, you you're in the back benches. You do this, or you vote this way or that way. You you vote, and I think everybody should be allowed to vote for conscience, mm -hmm. because uh, they're there to represent the people. Now, yeah, there's rules that you got to think about, but I was still even in a confidence vote. I wouldn't insist that they have to vote their way. Mm -hmm. All I would do is tell my members that hey, this is a confidence vote. If we don't win it, we're going to lose. And we'd probably end up in an election, but you are on your own. You decide whether it's just, uh, you know important enough to to cause an election or not, and it's your decision. Yep. And uh, so, can we wander into some specifics for this election? We have about yep. 15, 20 minutes or so sure. left. So, uh, do you have some um, key points or things? Because you're an avid follower, like you study like crazy and you got all your notes. And yep. there must be some things you've watched over the past four or five years, thinking we could do that better. So the Kiss Party is going to promote that. Um, One thing is health, mm -hmm. and the health there, uh, you know, like Vickers uh, is is promising everything for everything, and that's a good example of somebody in the back room is writing the, his speeches because. Uh, 
I think most people realize that Vicar hasn't got a lot of experience in this province and in politics. So he's just going by the backroom boys. And, uh, but in the health care, they've been promising doctors many elections. Hmm. And if they would have filled their promises, we wouldn't be short of doctors. So it's not that they don't want to fill their promises. It's just uh, hard to do. But there's another avenue of health care out there that is not being utilized to the fullest of point. We got homeopathics. Uh, we got uh, physicians, uh, uh, massage wise, therapists. And, nurse practitioners. Yeah, mm -hmm. nurse practitioners and all them. But most of them aren't paid by the, the health care professions, but it, they have to pay themselves. And... I guess it's unfortunately or fortunately, I got allergic to iron and the doctors couldn't give me anything. So that's when I went to the home homeopath, health, yeah. Yeah, homeopath people and uh, they gave me four treatments and I couldn't believe the difference they made in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I paid for it and that's fine, mm -hmm. but... It wasn't covered under Medicare or no, Blue Cross, right? No. Yeah. So uh, what I did was uh, I, I took the treatments and in four treatments, I was a lot better. But she discovered that I had a block between my liver, gallbladder, and, and kidney. And she said, I can solve it. I said, solve it. And uh, then she, the next one, she checked. She said, oh, you got a problem with B12. Well, I've been going and getting a B12 shot for 12 years, 14 years, I think. But anyway, and it's once a month. And then you go back for blood work every three months, and then you go for a doctor's appointment, and all that running, and she gave me one treatment, and I was doing this in conjunction with the doctor. The doctor told me I was wasting time, but uh, he said, I'm curious. So we, we did it, you know, like together, and he did blood work to confirm that things are going right, and uh, I haven't had a B12 shot in eight months. Mm -hmm. And just think of the amount of appointments and the traveling and all that over 14 years. Yeah. It, it, you know, and not only that, it doesn't take up the doctor's time when a problem is solved that they haven't got to work with mm -hmm. and that. So they're, they're, they've got to take a different approach to it. And uh, that's probably not the only approaches. But once you start looking for different approaches... Hmm. They'll come forth and, and it'll work. There's a lot of conversation around patient-centered health care. And that sounds like an example of patient-centered health care. And that would imply there's an integrated health care yeah, system is. from all the different avenues mm -hmm. of health care. Um, be interesting. Uh, our, our province is so small. We sh in geographically and uh, in terms of population, mm -hmm. you would you would think there's potential there for a turnaround or change to happen in a shorter period of time rather than it stays stuck. It is, and, and that's a benefit to us in a sense that we can make the adjustments and, and, and set the models out for the rest of the country. Hmm. And uh, if the, the problem comes right back to money, as you all know, yeah. and with this debt, uh, if they don't address it hmm. and deal with it, uh, then they're not going to have the money. But you, it, it, debt is a solvable problem. They advertise it on TV all the time. That, you know, <laughs> It's a solvable problem. Yeah. But it's not solvable if you don't address it. And none of them are... are I think it's a lack of knowledge how to address it. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, like I said, I went through, uh, you know, pretty near going bankrupt and I had to sell my farm and all that. And I thought it was kind of terrible. But then now I look at it as, oh, that was just a real good learning experience that you can use to help improve the province. Yeah. One of the solutions around public debt um, comes up, and it sounds too far-fetched for so many people, and yet it was something that was ingrained in our culture from the get-go, yep. which was the Bank of New Brunswick, yes. like we used to have the Bank of Canada, yeah. and we used to borrow against ourselves at a preferred interest rate, and we weren't beholding to private um, corporate interests. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are avenues, but somehow for some reason, like other things, like the French-English um, yep. split within the province, like closing smaller hospitals, mm -hmm. something seems to get stuck or the merit of a good idea just because it might sound new or involve a fair amount of uh, shifting mm -hmm. uh, of things. 
Do you want to speak into that space, whether it's the closing of the hospitals as a way of reducing the debt to smaller hospitals, um, whether it's can we create something new, which is actually old, like a Bank of New Brunswick? Because mm -hmm. um, all of that's going to be part of the narrative of the, past, the next four years, because this election's got a fairly significant weight to it. Well, the, the thing about the hospitals and closing the hospitals, I did not agree with that and closing the emergency rooms. I did, definitely did not agree with that. Uh, all that would do in reality would end up that when you got to St. John or Moncton, there would be a line up there and you'd be a lot longer getting in. It's long enough now getting into those places. So uh, that's not the answer. The, uh, the, the thing is that if you put these homeopathic doctors and physiotherapists and other uh, health care workers in, in those units along with the doctors that are there now, this smooths it out for them, and you can handle it. But the reason that I'm really against closing those hospitals is we'll take Sussex, for example. Everybody knows where that is. But they, uh, the, the, uh, they go out 45 minutes to an hour uh, from there for an ambulance call. Well, if they got to come back to Sussex, and then they got to go on to St. John or Moncton, you know, there it it's a long time, and it puts a lot of pressure on the EMTs to you know keep that person mm -hmm. uh, stable, and uh, so <clears throat> the quicker you can get them to a medical clinic and, and get the right treatment. And I've I've had patients that we brought from Napadogan into Fredericton, bad condition. They got in there. The uh, doctors checked them over and said, "Oh, this patient's got to go to St. John." They called St. John turn around and give them a few needles and whatnot, and then we write in the ambulance and off to St. John, and I seen it, uh, a run be 12 hours, hmm. and we were all volunteers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there, there's <clears throat> there's lots that, that they just got to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the other one on the... <laughs> no, it's okay. It doesn't, no. it doesn't matter because I I'd strung together some things where we tend to be stuck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet we have this solution kind of hanging right there. The other one is the Bank of New Brunswick okay. as a way of dealing yes, with the Yes, the bank. And uh, I, I have looked in and did research, and the Bank of Canada was opened. And it was opened back when the soldiers were coming back from the war in 34, I believe. And that made money available at zero or one percent interest to the provinces. And they built the Trans Canada Highway, the St. Lawrence Seaway, the railway clear across Canada. And when they completed all that, it ended up, and it was done in a very short time too, but anyway, when they got it done, they owed nineteen billion dollars. And that's who owed? The, well, all, all of the people that borrowed the money. Okay. It, they paid it back yep. in a very short time. But, like, each province borrowed the amount of money it needed to get the railway and the highway yep. across their province. And Good. that created a lot of work for their people. Yes. And then that was their portion to pay back. And it just went on that way. So it was divided up amongst the ten provinces. And, uh, yes, it, it worked good. But what Mr. Trudeau did, uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, he said, oh, Canada's in good shape now. You can borrow from the bank rating agencies. And it was, you know, at lower interest, but just a few years, the interest went sky high. And uh, they have never looked back since. But really, uh, we've paid way more money yeah. on interest than we're paying on our debt. All yeah. that we're paying here in New Brunswick is interest. We're not getting our debt down. So it's got to change or... We will go into receivership. Healthcare tends to be the biggest slice of the provincial budget. Yep. And you talk about trying to reduce the debt and deficit. So it's easy to draw a relationship between healthcare and the amount of debt that we carry. Yep. Especially if we're trying to sustain a certain amount of facility infrastructure and recruiting doctors and stuff. So it ever crossed your mind that um, we keep tinkering at where um, it's not where the problem is. We keep tinkering at something when we should be going that way to mm -hmm. fix this. Yes. Yeah, bad description. So in other words, in healthcare, isn't the shortest route to lower healthcare costs to have a healthier population? Because within 20 yes. years, you could really reduce healthcare costs without fighting and competing for doctors between two healthcare systems mm -hmm. in one province. And yet we don't put 
near the amount of energy into that yes. as we put into yeah. you know. Th thanks for that. It, it, th there is ways to improve the health care and, and reduce costs at the same time. Uh, I'm a great believer in, in uh, after the allergies, and I found out that, oh, there's a lot of medicines and homeopathic stuff and, and natural stuff that's good. Hemp seed oil is one of the best products that a person could buy and take. And we can grow it right here in the Maritimes. So, there, and it would boost agriculture, and then it would also reduce our health care costs. So there's, there's a different approach that's got to be brought up. And that, that's just one example. Hmm. And, uh, but the thing is, is, it's not the spending. It, it's how much interest we're paying. If we had that interest to put on these things, we would have the money to spend on, on this. And uh, that's the, the, the big crutch here that's got to be negotiated to hmm. get it under control relatively fast. Hmm. And it is doable. Hmm because I live through it. Do you have any thoughts on this? <laughs> As he and I go back and forth and back and forth, but, you know, do, do you have any... Well, I've, I've been following him for so many years yeah. that, uh, you know, I do agree with what he's saying. And, uh, yeah, we all need to be healthier, and, and we all struggle through that little hmm. thing, I think, anyway. But uh, there's a lot of product out there now that you can use and, and that... Uh, that you can eat healthier now than you used to probably years mm. ago. and It'll be interesting to see if this COVID-19 pandemic has encouraged more people to grow their own vegetables. Yeah. It, it, it's starting. sad, yes. and, and that that is true. Mm. And when they grow their own vegetables, they eat healthier. Mm. And the other thing, I think it's, it's not good for the restaurant business, but I think a lot of people just sort of woke up how much they were spending in restaurants <laughs> and, and that type of thing. So uh, I, th I think the, the, the COVID-19 is sort of a, a eye waker that is really going to have a lot of good benefits if we look at it and analyze it and take the best out of it. And mm -hmm. because like it's a lot of people now instead of renting all this office space or working from home. Hmm. And there, there's, those things will stay. And uh, there's a lot of benefit in that because, I mean, if you're not working from home, you're saving money on gas, you're not polluting the environment, the roads aren't getting, you know, yeah. beat as bad. So, you know, it, it's, it's just a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. and that, Not in the school system, but yes, that's the only thing. Yeah, yeah I, I think the school system is, is uh, I think it's going to be in a mess. I, uh, I don't like to predict messes, but uh, uh, it, it really, I don't think they, I don't think they should change it very much and put the kids back to school and, and uh, have it, you know, see how it goes. And I'm quite sure it would work out fairly good. Hmm. Um. Why don't you, if you can, offer up another Kiss Party platform for this election? Something else that um, no, you get there. Now. Yeah, well, go ahead, pull it, well, pull it out. Uh -huh. Put it right on the table. You don't need to hide it. People have paper on the table all the time. Yeah, no. Well, it's just the um, education. It, yeah, like the, the other other thing is that uh, there's no accountability from the politicians. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we've seen it. Uh, Seventy million to act on. Uh, and uh, when that happens, the government spends a fortune going to court and fighting and all that stuff. And uh, we, we, New Brunswick is one of the few provinces that does not have a constitution. constitution. Mm -hmm. And when Mr. Duffy was on trial and the judge said, well, to the uh, Senate, uh, where's your constitution? And they said, well, we don't have one. And they said, well, you can't charge a man for not uh, breaking rules and regulations you don't have. And that's exactly why the politicians like this, is that no matter how stupid or what they do wrong, they can't be charged. And uh, we've seen it too many times. You're referring to when Mr. Duffy was billing the Senate for something in PEI as well as something in Ottawa. Well, he was saying he was a senator, yeah. but according to the regulations, you had to, or, or the belief anyway, that you had to be from the province. Yeah. Well, he was from the province, but he was not living there. Yeah. He was living in Ottawa. His yeah. driver's license and his Medicare yeah. health and all that and was in Ottawa. And that's because PEI didn't have a constitution? 
No. Yeah. No, that was the Senate didn't have the Constitution. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm. and, Fine. I just wanted some clarity. Yeah, and then this yeah. also applies then to New Brunswick that way? Yes, okay. New Brunswick. I mean, like, there, there, there's no, sure uh, uh, you know, like, uh, there's no accountability to the, to the politicians. And there's way too many deals of uh, that are closed behind doors mm. that you can't see. Now, good examples in the uh, in public utility hearing. It ended up that we was there for more than just the, the, the rate increase. Uh, it was about the review of, of uh, Point Le Pro. Mm -hmm. Okay. They said, oh, uh, you know, we said, well, I said, what's, what's that cost? Well, uh, oh, well, you have to tie, sign a constitution. Uh, or, uh, confidentiality. Confidentiality agreement. And uh, I said, well, I thought these were public hearings. <laughs> well, yeah, but you can't tell the public. <laughs> and I said, no. I said, if you don't want me to know something, don't tell me because my brain isn't good enough to remember what's <laughs> what I should keep quiet yeah. and what I shouldn't. Yeah. So anyway, they, but, but even in those hearings, they would not tell the, the members at the hearings what the actual cost was. And nobody knows what that cost is today. I mean, uh, some people know, but yeah, they're not it's telling. Not, it's not public. And, and, uh, but this happens in, in government all over the all over the things, and I don't really think that the taxpayers got to pay that bill, and mm. and so if they're paying the bill, they should be able to know what it's for, mm. and that's the type of open government we got to shift to. I don't think we can do it overnight, but I'm very sure we can gradually bring it, we'll put it up around. Here. Well, if there's one thing I know about this man yeah. I've lived with for 52 years. Yeah. He tells the truth. Interesting, eh? And, yep. and that can be a challenge sometimes. <laughs> I know, but... I mean, it, in it, political arenas, it, you know? It, exactly. Yeah. It does, but in the end, it'll, it'll <laughs> serve you I well. I think it'll serve him. Yeah, because things have changed. Uh, the way um, the relationship between business and government through the 80s and 90s was mm -hmm. really interwoven. Yeah. So it became synonymous, you know, run the government like a business. Well, no, it's yeah, a public that's, service. That's right. It's not a business. Exactly. It's got a different model, but yet that still wove its way yeah. through. So it's automatic about, um, oh, we have to support business by funding this, funding this, funding this. And now you're speaking to all the lost money that's happened yeah. because of 30 years of that relationship between the two. Long lost in that whole conversation is the voluntary sector because there's three sectors yes. in, in oh, the yeah. province. And, and that yeah. barely get mentioned, although you mentioned, you know, the origins of Ambulance New Brunswick and Oh, yeah, and, and, and the fire work, department. And we work with them all the time. Yeah. And, and all, all the outlying areas is volunteer fire yeah. departments. And which, they put a lot of time and money in. And yeah, Which gets into that. Another theme is the New Brunswick with the, the differences between rural and, and what we call urban. I yep. mean, it's still quite yep. small, but the, the rural areas... Um, greatly feel underserved, and rightly so to a degree, because a lot of our policy that gets made tends to be focused on urban areas, mm. and that's forcing mm. a shift of people to move. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes that shift is natural. I mean, it's tough for the North Shore because this movement by young people to bigger cities is going to happen anyway because it's yeah, happening it everywhere does. else. Yeah. We just know it in our own context, but when you pop your head out of the province and look around, you're seeing the same yeah. push into cities. Not necessarily good or bad, but it's mm. trackable. It's factual, yeah. Yeah. And, but, uh, so that rural-urban divide, do you want to speak to that a little bit? Although I don't want to call it a divide because it's all the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I know. It's, but mm. it's but, underserved somehow. Yeah, and, and the, but the way I think to, to sort of bring it back is to start uh, getting businesses out in the in the in the country hmm. and i mean you can see it uh, a bit uh you know, like tnt started a, a building supply out in keswick hmm. and they're just outside the city so they don't have somewhat the same taxes yeah. and one thing or another in that and there's other businesses that that have done the same i know machine shops and stuff that hmm. will not come in the city because of the of the regulations and the costs and all that and yet when they do that uh, they got a lot of employees out there and uh, even some of the employees come from the city. <laughs> they live in the city and go out there to work. Yep. And uh, so it, it, uh, I think it's a, just a matter of a mindset to, to uh, you haven't got to have all the city, all the, the businesses in the big cities. Get them out, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And today with the Internet service, that makes it a whole lot easier because when you want to order something online, you don't know whether you're downtown or you're 
Yeah. No, no backwoods. Yeah, it levels the playing field. Yeah, yeah. It sure I, does. I want to go back to MB Power a bit. What are your thoughts on the small nuclear reactors, which are mm -hmm. part of part of the conversation for this election? It's not the top of mind one, but it's about mm -hmm. fourth or fifth down. Yeah, and and again, they were brought up in the hearings, and uh, the information that we got acquired, and that was that those uh, nukes are there's ten different models that. 10 different companies wants to build, and they're all pushing to get the first one. So that that'll be the... Mm -hmm. the prototype kind Prototype, of. yeah. And, but, once they decide which one it's going to be, it's 10 years away before that will be producing electricity. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to have real deep pockets to keep it going. And that... And this is the same as with the smart meters. The smart meters, they want it 93 million this time around. And it's that's just the first step. Before they get the smart meters and all the systems integrated up so that it works 100% efficiency, so they can get all the benefits, mm -hmm. it's 10 steps. Mm -hmm. And they're all about $100,000. So it's a lot of money, and I, I don't really see that working all that great because these are computerized equipment, and how long does computers last today before they're obsolete? Mm -hmm. And so it's just going to be a, a constant, oh, well, yeah, we got to keep up, and once you get started, you're, you're sort of going down that road and you can't stop, and that. And there is a lot of problems with smart meters so far, and... Uh, Saskatchewan put in a hundred, uh, bought five hundred thousand, got a hundred and five in, and they took them out. And I asked at the hearing, I said, "Was NB Power aware of that?" And they said yes. And they flipped it over, and there was the, there was the uh, thing on the front page of the cleaner about it. And I said, "Well, did you just look into as to what was was why it happened?" And they said, "Yes, it was." Uh, uh, they put in a hundred and five meters, and they had so many caught the houses on fire, they took them out. And they had spent millions, I think it was 500 million, to buy those meters. And then here they had all these meters that are. And the ironic thing about it was, is that when we was arguing the first uh, rejection of the smart meter, mm -hmm. Saskatchewan was arguing the same thing, mm -hmm. and they decided to go with it. Mm -hmm. We would have had the same generation of meters here, and we would have had the same problem. Yeah. And... I told the board, I said, you just made the right decision because you wouldn't know that would have, that's what would have happened. And that would, would have been another checkbox in the legacy of tried and didn't work, tried and oh, didn't work, gee. tried and didn't work, which, which is good because yeah. you need to take risk. But at, at some point, um, something's got to come through for you at some well, point. Well, your risks have got to be balanced on how much you can afford to take. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's if you can't afford to, to go out and buy a, you know, a big LTD or a town car or whatever, yep. then, you know, uh, you might want to go with a Volkswagen. It'll you, get you to <laughs> back and forth. Yeah. Again, back to power supply and generation yep. and distribution and, and stuff. Um, does it ever cross your mind that we spend a lot of energy in our media and our politics about generating power and distribution power and sale of power for 760,000 people? The, does it ever cross your mind that maybe we've got more than enough power? And and is this, and because it never comes up in the media that this is mainly for export. We don't have a large enough provincial market or a domestic market for all of the energy we generate. So where's it all going? It's, it's got to be going down to the states. So is the real discussion, or the discussion that's not surfacing about doing all the small nuclear uh, generators or the joy thing that they try to do with hydrogen and. Or, is all of that to help out New Brunswickers, or is that all more for something somewhere else? It's part well, of our export market economy. Well, that Joy thing, they were hoping that that would be very successful hmm. and that they would have a, a patent on it. So everybody else, every other country or province or whatever, they would get royalties off of it. And that's what the, they was really looking for. And it would, really would have helped New Brunswick out if it would have been true. Yes. But the facts was it didn't didn't work out to be true and uh, no there there's uh, 
So we're expanding our generation capacity because this is the same argument for 10 or 15 years ago well, when, me, when retrofitting LaPro. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me say something that I run across this summer in just a few months. Uh, yeah, I think it's been about a month or two. But anyway, we was to, mm -hmm. up to Misco Island. Hmm. Beautiful little trip. And they got 24 windmills up there on the island. And I said, well, I don't quite understand. They look like they've been there for a while. Oh, yeah, I've been there a long time. And I said, well, hold on. How come uh, yous were out of power, you know, with that big ice storm? And the person said, well, oh, all that power goes is exported. Yeah, exported. It's not used locally. Yeah. Well, um, you know, uh, really, the people at the table should say, okay, if you want to produce power there and export it, and that's mm -hmm. good, and that, but a percentage of it has got to be distributed locally, mm -hmm. available well, locally if we need it. Well, what crosses my mind is using public dollars for an export market that's going to yeah. privatize where it's all going. That's, yeah, and, and yeah. I mean, uh, you know, there, there's... There's, like I say, there's so many deals that the public don't know about. Mm. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. We have two, three minutes. How do you want to wrap up? And do you want to get a word in here? Is, he, <laughs> no. is he's on a roll? He's a politician, <laughs> not just the support system. <laughs> yeah, but it's important, though, because it's, you know, we might oh, yeah. see Gerald and know that it's focused on Gerald, but it's not alone. No, <laughs> and, and alone. it, it well, is very important nice to have to your, know. you know, have your support. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's for sure. But I guess in, in closing, uh, there's a lot more I could go on, but in closing, I would like to say that uh, I, I think we're in a, a time when politics is changing as much as every other thing, and the, the really vote for the Smalley partners. I'd like to have um, candidates in all writings. I haven't got it, and I apologize for that. But uh, let's get the smaller parties in there all around the table so that we don't have this here uh oh we're blue and we know what to do and or we're red it, it you know let's all work together to solve the problems of new brunswick and if we do we will come away a whole lot better we may have a few arguments but that's all right arguments are cheap oh, it's yeah. some of these decisions that are being made for political purposes that are not cheap and uh it, it, there's way too much of it going on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being, letting me be here. <laughs> it's great. Somebody's got to look good at this table. <laughs> and thanks for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other.